And you saw this only represented five hydrogens. Mm -hmm. So one thing I don't know if you did is who's attached to this carbon here? Well, it must be another carbon. We may as well go ahead and put this carbon in here because that's the, well, I suppose it could be, no, it couldn't be an oxygen because then there wouldn't be any room for everything else. Or, no, 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 that's not right. right. Well, if it was an oxygen, yeah, it could be an oxygen. Yeah. Wouldn't you expect even further to the left? That's at the lower part of what you expect for a benzene ring. 6.5 to 8.5. It's not that far to the left, but yeah, that's right. And also, these might not all be equivalent to each other then. That, that's right. So this is more likely to be the carbon than the oxygen, but maybe I'll hold off on that. Now, coming to here, I, I think maybe we should really start with this. So here we have a singlet, and also it's broad. This is something we were talking about earlier. We were remembering that in infrared spectroscopy, the alcohol usually is a broad absorption, and I wasn't quite sure whether that was true for proton NMR or not, but it looks like this is confirming that the alcohol hydrogen tends to be a broad absorption in proton NMR as well. So when we saw that this was a broad absorption here, and it only represents one hydrogen, and it's a singlet, that, and we know we have an oxygen anyway, we should start really start thinking about alcohols. Mm -hmm. We should definitely start thinking that we have an alcohol here. Especially with no split. Yeah, the fact that there's no splitting and that it's broad. That's what the BR stands for here. The fact that they told us this was broad, so it looks like you would. Uh, it looks like alcohol hydrogens tend to have broad absorptions, not just in IR but also in proton NMR. I wasn't remembering whether that was true or not earlier. Going to here, this is pulled pretty far to the left, so it seems like here we have a case of a hydrogen on a carbon that's connected to an electronegative element, because we seem to be in this region. We seem to be in this region. Now, the one problem that you had originally, I was asking you which of these was B. Well, this, seems, this must be what you're thinking of as B, but since there's two hydrogens here, you should have put two hydrogens on the carbon. We should put two hydrogens on this carbon uh, because there's two hydrogens in this group. I, see, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't taking into the fact that you can use, oh, like, for instance, the alcohol group in both groups, and then you eliminate one. I was trying to place it in one group and not wor ever worry about it again. I don't know if I quite followed that. But I was trying to put the alcohol in the one group. Right. That was where it was going to stay. Uh, there weren't going to be any other possibilities. But now okay. here you have two possibilities. See, that's why right. I wasn't. I wasn't. Okay. Thinking. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. And then this would be basically a terminus over here. And here we have this looks like another CH two group. But this seems to be pretty close to the oxygen as well. Pretty close to the oxygen. In fact, normally we might expect it to also be. Um, on the carbon that's attached to the oxygen, but there's really no way we can get that to happen here. So putting the groups together. This would be group D. This would be group B. This would be group C. And these hydrogens would all be group A. So group C, it wouldn't give us any other information other than it's, it, might be on, it might be a CH2 group. One thing we should have talked about more is the splitting here. You already figured out that this is adjacent to two hydrogens, and this is adjacent to hyd two hydrogens, so that definitely matches this guess over here. So it seems like these two CH2 groups are adjacent to each other. It seems like these, so here we could have said, So we're guessing that the group B hydrogens are on a carbon that's connected to this electronegative element. And then we also know from the splitting that they should be adjacent to two hydrogens. So this information here really gives us this whole fragment. This information here gives us both of these CH2 groups. And now it's pretty clear that this CH2 group is the same as this one over here, this group C. And now we're out of carbons. We only had eight carbons to start with, so we should now just attach this fragment to the benzene over here. It's always important to keep going back to your molecular formula and making sure you're using the right number of carbons. So now we've accounted for our splitting. Now again, the benzene hydrogens are not splitting each other. Why are the benzene, now the benzene hydrogens, theoretically these are not equivalent to each other because they're different distances from the alcohol, but all of them are so far away from the alcohol that they're all absorbing pretty close to each other here and they're not splitting each other because they're so close, close to being equivalent. Here we have a triplet. 
because it's split by group C. And again, as we were talking about, you don't get split by alcohol hydrogens, and alcohol hydrogens don't get split either. That accounts for the fact that this was a singlet over here, and the fact that this was broad was a strong clue that this was the OH group. Okay. So that's good to know that alcohols tend to absorb there. Let's look up some other absorptions here. So based on your table, where would the table have predicted that group B would absorb? Group B is, uh, to 4.0? Yeah, that's right. 3.4 to 4.0. Oh, and we got it. That's in the right region. Group B is in that region. And where would the table predict group C would absorb? Group C. Two point three to two point eight. That's right. So group C is connected to benzene. Mm -hmm. Well, connected to the AR. That would be two point three to two point eight. Oh, it's actually in that region, isn't it? Yeah. So that's accounting. <coughs> for this over here. That's accounting for why this is so far to the left, even though it's not directly connected to the oxygen. Even though it's not directly connected to the oxygen, it's being pulled to the left by the benzene over here. So I think we've accounted for all the features now. Uh, the spectrum, make sense? Yeah. All right, good. Well, you, you worked out most of that uh, on your own. Well, I should have emphasized before more these diagnostics for alcohols. So again, alcohol, hydrogens. If you see a single hydrogen with a broad peak, in the 0 to 5 region, that's a very strong clue for an alcohol. A single broad, a single hydrogen that's a singlet. Because, uh, of course, alcohols are just a single hydrogen. That's a strong clue you should start thinking about would, alcohols. Um, would an amine do the same thing? Uh, I think that those are also tend to be broad as well. And, of course, we, we would think about an amine if there was a nitrogen instead of an oxygen. I, I, I think I remember that because the broadness is really effective hydrogen bonding. And both NH and OH can do hydrogen bonding. 